Hey guys, what's happening? So, welcome to part three of the Kitty Tech X1 Clipper uh, ABS conversion, like the ABS printer build. Um, so, um, in my previous video, part two, I installed the LCD, got the electronics converted. And I guess the first part of the video, I just kind of gave you an introduction to this printer, and what I liked about it, and how I think it's going to be a good ABS printer, uh, a fully enclosed ABS printer. Um, so, in my last video, I, I mentioned this. I got this thing for ten dollars, like a crazy good deal. Like normally they're like ninety, but there was like a clearance sale for ten dollars. But it was a whole kit. It had this Nemo fourteen motor, the fans, the thermistor, the heater cartridge, everything pretty much. Um, so, one of the things I wanted to do was keep as much as the original ABS plastic, injection mold ABS plastic, as I could. Um, so I need to figure out. Uh, where am I going to put this motor? How am I going to mount the extruder? Um, because remember the goal, why I mentioned in my other video, was I want to keep everything below this top surface. Because I want to have a cable chain. Because I want to, I'm going to create a top lid. It looks like there was something for that already. But I didn't want to have like some steep lid on it, right? I wanted to keep it flush if I could, you know? Like that. So I can just pop the cover off. Um, so I need to figure out, I'm going to put this on there, and I, I see these two filled with 15, where they're M3 screws, but they're 15 millimeters apart. So I think I'm going to mount it right here, and it kind of does two different things. So by having it here, it keeps it, gives me enough angle, because I don't want to lose uh, the max travel, like there's only 150 millimeters max travel, so it's 150 by 150 by 150. So I think... Yeah, so it's also going to be a, a 35 millimeter, 10 millimeter fan. What's it called? A 3520 fan, um, which is kind of an odd size. Usually it's 20 or 40 or 30. Um, all right, so I got to put that there. And I think this is going to handle solve two different issues. It's going to solve my issue with the end stop back here, my exit end stop. So if I go back, it's going to hit that. So it's going to solve that issue. And then, even though this is going to be a, really like a polycarbonate, nylon, more of like an exotic filament printer, um, I want to, um, I'm still going to have like a cooling fan. I want to have like a layer, so in case I want to do PLA in here, you know, I still want to have like a auxiliary cooling fan. I could mount an external. To keep, I mean, I don't really, this, this is not going to be a high speed printer like my other ones. Like, this is really just for more quality and exotic materials. So, I figure I'm just going to drill two 15mm screws here. Probably going to print out a template so I make them perfectly straight. And then, like that. Alright, so I'm going to design a little, like a little drill template that are perfectly spaced 15mm apart. That way I'm not eyeballing it. Alright, so I'm actually going to put a hardened seal nozzle on it right from the get-go. Because I know I'm going to be doing like carbon fiber nylon and that kind of stuff. Like I said, this is just for exotic. Well, I mean, the main goal of the printer is exotic filaments that require a heated chamber. Alright, there's my drill template. <laughs> Got the H2 on there. Now let's see if the. Um, All right, X works. Yeah, the back of the motor hits the end stop. So, okay, so I got to fish. I gotta put the fan on here, and I need to feed up um, the thermistor and the heater cartridge back up. All right, so let's decide to run all the wires to the front here, just because my board's in the corner. I don't have to extend any wires; they all fit perfectly. Plus, I have more room up here. I don't really have anything going on up here in the front. But I have a lot more stuff going on and back here with the different lead rods, so I have a lot less space to run cable chain. So if I go up here, it's going to hide here, but when it homes back, it homes over here. So I figured I have a cable chain to just wrap around this way. So, all right, so I got all that stuff going. Um, at this point, I should be able to actually test to make sure that it's extruding in the right direction. Um, I don't know if I like this, this Bowden coupler here. I mean, it's not really low profile. Like, I wish they would have just used the insert. You know, like one of those boat, like you see, the, some of you see like on a Montec BMG. 
Um, that would definitely get a lot more low profile, but um, plus I'm not gonna. I don't. I don't know. I don't really want to have the spool back here because I'm never gonna go behind the printer. Like, see right there, there's a big spool back there. So, um, I might move that to the front up here, maybe. Someplace up here, maybe. That way I can actually see the spool, or so I can, I can get it in the cable chain, possibly. Um, just because I like to be able to see you back here, maybe, in the corner. Because I like to be able to see uh, the spool. Um, yeah, I don't want to, like, go behind it and see how much spool, like, how much film is left in the spool. So, I didn't take my first extruder yet. And it's coming on. I want to make sure the the motor is going the right direction, and this is actually pinned out correctly. So the last time, like the motor, you don't know what the pin out is, so you have to flip, reverse it to get the coils correct. And right, let's do a, an extrude, and we'll find out right now if it's if, if you hear a bunch of locking. Uh, okay, that means the coils are pinned correctly. Okay. Uh, retract. So I gotta make sure that I mean it's just a matter of the cool thing about Clipper compared to Marlin is I don't have to recompile the whole software, you know. So I gotta make sure that we're going in the right direction. Alright, so for fun, let's do a quick uh, ABS test. I mean this ABS is probably six or seven years old. I mean it's covering webs. Um, just because I bought it and it never printed right with my Originally I bought it for that printer bot. I mean six, seven years ago? I'm not even sure. Alright, so it's pretty old filament. But I'm gonna blow it off my air compressor and um, do a quick little test uh print the ABS. Even though I'm not even close to being done, but it's have a little fun here. Alright, so this whole build stick, this is my it was heated up hundred degrees, just coming off. It was peeling up. So let's do my first temp chest print, calibration cube. So 100 degrees on the plate, 260 on the thing here. Still got to dial in the configuration, but I should be pretty much dialed in here, I think. I mean, I set the rotational distance on this. I set with a piece of paper with the jester screws, so I don't know. I mean, eventually, I'm not going to keep that build plate. I'm going to have a magnetic build plate. Put that in here. Hopefully it doesn't run, like ram into that bed right there. Well, it is an end stop, so there's no probe. All right, so I had what? That's the corner. That's zero zeros over here on this left hand corner. Yeah, but. Oh, it's doing like a like a purge. It's not normal. I just like a. What did I do with the signatures? Okay, let's get up here. Oh, it's not extruding here. Two. Yeah, too, way too close to the bed here. Let's do five. Okay, now it's going there, guys. Okay. That's not doing a brim. Pretty old filament, so we'll see what happens here. Sort of annoying because I, I mean you don't really get a good view of what's what you're printing. It's kind of hidden behind that big uh, thing right there, but I trap as much air as I can in there. Actually, what I might do to I'm, I'm trying I'm trying to figure out heated chamber type situation. What I might do is just put a fan under the build plate. There's a hole back there. I might, might put a fan down there and just blow air off this hot the bottom of the, the build plate to heat the chamber up. Because the bed will compensate for that, you know what I mean? And we'll see that it's running cooler and just it'll keep on increasing the temperature. So that might actually, I might use that just to, it's a small little chamber, so. Or even just the heat of the bed itself and the, the fan going might 
get a gun. So that's the one thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a temp sensor somewhere in either in Clipper or here somewhere. Alright. First print, clipper. That's not quite that movement is. This is actually why I picked this printer to do this in. I mean, well, besides it was a free printer, but I mean, I could just tell by looking at it that the the gantry and the system seem very extremely smooth, way smoother than I'm. I mean, I fixed free. I fixed hundreds of 3D printers, so I've seen every kind of printer, and this one just seemed exceptionally smooth. Um, yeah, I've seen just about every sort of like gantry system that you can possibly imagine, but this one was just exceptionally smooth. They can't even hear it. Like, I don't know what it is, but the ball bearings in this thing are crazy smooth compared to the other ones. So either these these rods are really perfect or these ball bearings are, are great. You know, another note is that when you're when you're doing an ABS printer, I mean, I see a lot of people buy those enclosures, like those pop-up enclosures. Um, I've seen them, I mean, somebody brought one here with uh, for a Prusa and uh, the ones for like the Creality's. But the problem when you put like your whole printer in an enclosure is you overheat your electronics too. So you kind of want your electronics separate from the heated chamber. I'm going to bring down the motor car a little bit. I mean, I'm actually running a 600 milliamp. That's probably way too much for that tiny motor. It's getting kind of warm. Yeah, so. Um, it's tiny, so I'm thinking four, 400 maybe, 450. I mean, some of my other like little uh, Nemo 14, the 36 millimeter, the round motors, I'm running about anywhere from 400 to 500, depending on the actual extruder. You can kind of really hear the. I wish I would have used, used plastic gears, but um, in the extruder, it's so much quieter. You can actually hear like the the, the backlash or the slop in the gears every time you do a retraction. You hear that click, click, click. First I thought it was the end stop, and I was like, oh no, it's actually in the thing there so all right so the sun is coming down and something almost does not look right with that that's supposed to be a 20 millimeter cube let's see what we got here um, it's 17.8 so I'm guessing these aren't like uh, these were only 16 teeth pulleys versus 20. The little plastic pulleys back here, if you can see that, see right there. I'm thinking those are smaller than. Um, so let's see what's Z like. Z seems like it's probably okay. Obviously the quality is horrible, but I I uh, I don't know which it's cool to get off there. All right, so I took the pulley off and measured the. Down here, the pulley here, 17 teeth. That's super odd. So the rotational distance should be uh, 34. So 2 millimeter belt pitch times 17 um, should be 34. Yeah, I could tell this because the second calibration cube that I did was bigger. Yeah, odd number. So hmm. All right, that's it for part three. So I got to hook in the cable chain now and figure out a way to do that but <laughs> get lace wires in there but so minimum layer time cool time it really makes a difference or I need to hook up this fan so give it some additional cooling but all right yeah I'm good I mean I got the dimensions correct everything is um everything is looking good now like I said it was uh, that odd 17 tooth pulleys the rotational distance was three uh 34. So it's still a little bit big, but yeah, by having the extra cube there, it kind of increased my layer time or my layer cool time. I had to go over here and print a layer, then over here print a layer. <clears throat> so it improved the quality. Now you can see a big difference between this one and this one. That's just, I think it's just a heat. Like the heat didn't, didn't dissipate in this one as much. So this one, one is like a sacrificial. So, yeah, I'm guessing this was actually getting more cooling from the front here, but, all right, so, uh, cable chain and side covers and cooling fan, that'll be in part four, and that should be the 
final video. But, alright, pretty cool so far. Alright, awesome.